Hey guys, Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon here. Did you know that 52% of men between the ages of 40 to 70 experience erectile dysfunction? And what that means is that they are unable to have penetrative intercourse every time they want to. So no wonder there are a number of sexual enhancement pills available on the market or sex pills for men to try. Do these actually work? What's in them? And should you try? We're going to delve deep into that. And if you like what you see, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give me a big thumbs up. As a disclaimer, I do not recommend any of these supplements, but I do know that there are people out there who are using them and I want you to know what you're putting in your body. Also, I think it's extremely important to see a physician to get a diagnosis and be evaluated for your erectile dysfunction. It can be a sign of other really serious problems like heart disease or problems with your blood vessels. It can also help us find other problems like low testosterone. So it's important to do that. And also we can prescribe you medication that is FDA regulated for erectile function. And there is no such thing as a medication or supplement without side effects. So I know people think that these supplements are all natural and they are, but we don't know what goes into them and they all also have side effects. So that's not a reason to forego seeing a physician. So I see a lot of guys who come into my office who've tried some sort of gas station pill, some rhino pill, something over the counter for their erectile dysfunction before they finally come see me. So before you try anything over the counter, get on the FDA website. They have an entire list of medications that are on the naughty list or on the warning list because they have undeclared ingredients or they have ingredients that are supposed to be taken under the supervision of a physician, like the medications that we prescribe for erectile dysfunction. So please avoid those medications. They are not safe. The biggest issue with all of these supplements is they are not regulated by the Food and Drug Administration. So there is no body of governance looking at what ingredients they're putting on the label and comparing it to what's actually in the tablet that you're taking. So while the ingredients themselves that I'm going to go over today may be safe for you, it may not be actually what's in the tablet itself. So you have to be very, very careful. Also, some of these are quite costly. I know back in the day that the cost of medications like sildenafil or tadalafil, which are commonly known as Viagra or the blue pill, were more expensive expensive and so it was cost prohibitive to get those medications, but now they are available in generic form. So if you see a physician, you can get a generic prescription for these medications. And very often there are coupon programs or compounding pharmacies that can give you even better discounts. So it shouldn't be cost prohibitive to get medications to help with your erections. The first medication we're going to discuss is called Libido Max. And right on the cover of this medication, it says it is doctor developed male enhancement pills. But I went on the website and I couldn't find any information about a physician that actually claims to have developed this medication. So I'm not sure if that claim is actually true. Also on the website, and I'm going to read it directly from the website, it says, this product contains a chemical known in the state of California to cause cancer and or birth defects or other reproductive harm. So I would immediately say, please don't take this medication because there is a chance that there is some medication that's been linked to cancer somewhere. The first active ingredient in this medication is L-arginine. You're going to see this in a lot of the medications we review. And this is actually a precursor for what's called nitric oxide. And nitric oxide is a key component of the ability for someone to obtain an erection. So what happens is when you have nitric oxide, it allows the blood vessels to open up so that blood can actually flow into the penis and cause tumescence or erection. And so without nitric oxide, you can't have an erection. So in theory, this sounds like, yes, L-arginine is an important part and could potentially improve erections. They have done studies on this specific compound and they found that the data is mixed. Probably a dose of five milligrams of L-arginine a day may be helpful, but it's most likely helpful in people who already have some vessel disease so that it helps open up those vessels. So patients who have cardiovascular disease or other blood vessel diseases, this may be good for them. There's also a number of side effects that actually none of these pills seem to describe any side effects. But when you look at the individual ingredients, they are listed as having some side effects, including cramping, nausea, abdominal pain, or bloating. And so you might get some abdominal discomfort or belly discomfort when you take this medication. 
You also want to be careful taking this in if you have a history of asthma. So asthma or a reactive airway disease can actually be worsened by taking anything with L-arginine in it. Also, if you have low blood pressure, liver disease, or any genetic conditions, this can be concerning. And so you want to avoid these medications if you have any of those problems. The next active ingredient in this medication is horny goat weed. You may sometimes see this, see this ingredient labeled horny goat weed, or you may sometimes see it labeled with the first word being epimedium. What this is, is an herb that has an active ingredient called icarin. And this active ingredient helps to increase nitric oxide synthesis so that you have more nitric oxide available to then obtain an erection. There have been no randomized controlled trials, meaning that they haven't tested this particular herb extract with other um, sugar pills or placebo pills to see if there's really truly a benefit. So we don't really know if this is effective, but in theory, that's how it works. So horny goat weed has low bioavailability, poor absorption, and a short half-life. And what does that mean? Well, that means that when you take this medication or this particular ingredient, it doesn't stick around very long in the bloodstream and it doesn't really get absorbed into the bloodstream so that it's useful. And in that case, it's probably not very effective. There's also some concern that over long periods of time, you could get some dizziness with taking it some vomiting, dry mouth, and in really severe circumstances, if you're taking a large quantity of it, it can cause muscle spasms or difficulty breathing. So you do have to be careful with all these medications. I keep saying medications, but what I really mean is supplements because these are not medications. They are not regulated by the Food and Drug Administration. Again, you want to be careful taking anything with horny goat weed in it. If you have low blood pressure, if you're taking blood thinning medications, or if you have any clotting disorder. The next active ingredient in this particular supplement is Yohimbi. And Yohimbi is extracted from the bark of an African tree. And it actually works in two ways. It has a central effect, meaning it works on the brain and it blocks the receptors that decrease sexual arousal. It also works to increase nitric oxide. This has been studied, but it only enrolled a small number of patients, so it wasn't powered or it wasn't large enough to detect a true difference between taking Yohimbi versus taking just a regular sugar pill. So we don't know if it's completely effective. If you're taking any supplement with Yohimbi in it, you need to be careful if you have any sort of psychological disorder, if you have already have anxiety, if you are having any prostate problems, if you have diabetes or heart problems, these sorts of things can make it dangerous for you to take this sort of ingredient in a supplement. The next supplement that we're going to review is called Male Extra, and this has two particular active ingredients. The first one is pomegranate. And so does pomegranate actually improve erections? So there was a study done looking at men drinking pomegranate juice daily for four weeks compared to people who didn't drink pomegranate juice because the thought is that pomegranate is an antioxidant and this antioxidant can improve the bioavailability, which means that your body can see more nitric oxide when you need to have an erection. But in this study, they didn't really find any difference in erectile function after drinking pomegranate juice daily for four weeks. So I don't think it really works. Also, if you're taking anything with pomegranate in it, you need to be careful if you have certain medications that are processed by the liver or if you have high blood pressure because it can counteract with a lot of blood pressure medication. The next ingredient is something we already covered and that's L-arginine. So male extra, I don't think you're all that. The next supplement we're going to look at is Virectin. And Virectin has a disclaimer on its website which says exactly, the FDA has not evaluated any statements that are made by the company and the supplement product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. So again, I think use this with caution because they're trying to protect themselves obviously from any sort of liability. But again, these supplements are not regulated by the FDA. So, so far, I'm not really that impressed by any of them. Although the ingredients, you know, may show some promise in some studies, nothing is a home run and nothing is conclusive. So let's see what this one has. This one has L-arginine, which we already talked about, as well as horny goat weed, which we talked about as well. And it has another thing called maca. Maca is a Peruvian root vegetable that's similar to a radish. 
And this has been thought to increase sexual desire. And there is one study on maca where they gave it to 57 men and compared it to placebo or taking some sugar pill. And they found that it was somewhat effective. Again, small study um, and may be useful, but we're not really sure. And so the nice part about maca is there's really not a lot of side effects or contraindications, at least that have been reported with this particular ingredient. The most common ones are usually mild and they're uh, kind of some moodiness, some abdominal cramps, and occasionally insomnia. But again, there wasn't a whole long litany of things to look out for. The next ingredient is ginkgo biloba. And ginkgo biloba is extracted from the leaves of the ginkgo tree, which is a Chinese tree. And ginkgo biloba has been used for years in ancient Chinese medicine. And what they presume the mechanism of action is, is that it also increases the bioavailability of nitric oxide. But there was a study done, a randomized study, where they used ginkgo biloba and compared it to placebo, and they found that there was really no statistically significant difference in erectile function. So I don't think this really works that well. Also, there's a lot of reported side effects with ginkgo biloba, specifically a lot of anxiety, a risk of spontaneous bleeding, and it really can contraindicate with a lot of other medications that impact the central nervous system. So medications for psychological disorders, anxiety, and if it's taken with certain things like St. John's warts or melatonin, it can cause what's called hypomanic symptoms. So where you're um, potentially in a detrimental fashion, really too awake and energetic and doing things that are out of character for you. So you have to take this carefully. Next one is Max Performer. And Max Performer has the same exact statement on its website as, as Verectin, which is, which is exactly that the FDA hasn't reviewed or condones any of the statements, and this is not intended to cure, prevent, or diagnose any sort of disease. So again, it's done for liability, but it points out that the FDA is not regulating this. So this supplement has three main active ingredients. So it includes maca root powder, which we talked about. It also includes horny goat wheat. And lastly, it includes Korean red ginseng or Panax ginseng. And this is also thought to increase the production of nitric oxide. And interestingly, it's been studied pretty reasonably well. And they only looked at a small number of patients. And in all these studies, they really focused on healthy men with erectile dysfunction. So this may not apply to people who have other comorbidities. And in this study, they looked at 90 men and they found that it was 60% effective. So of those who it was effective for, they had an increase in penile rigidity, girth, the duration of their erection, and libido and overall satisfaction. So could it be effective? Potentially. It's been studied. But there are some really significant side effects here. The number one and most common side effect is insomnia. You have to be really careful when taking this with any sort of stimulant, so caffeine, Sudafed, things like that, because it can actually speed up your heart rate pretty quickly. You also have to be careful when you're taking it if you have any sort of immunosuppressive condition. So if you have lupus, transplant, if you have diabetes, this can be contraindicated in people with those conditions as well. The next supplement is Viacil, and we've already discussed all the main active ingredients in this particular supplement, and they include epimedium or horny goat weed, ginkgo biloba, pomegranate, and ginseng root extract. And the last supplement we're going to discuss is Vig RX. Interestingly, this particular supplement has undergone an actual clinical trial. And so there is a, one paper which goes over this exact formulation and tries it against men who are taking a placebo medication. So what they did, this particular trial was funded by an Indian pharmaceutical company called Vedic Life Sciences. And they took 76 men and they randomized them to take either two tablets of Vig RX or take a placebo. And what they found was they found improvement in five distinct domains. These included erectile function, orgasmic function, sexual desire, intercourse satisfaction, and overall satisfaction. So they, the nice part about this particular medication or supplement is that it's been studied in a systematic way and published in the biomedical literature. Furthermore, this particular supplement is endorsed by a physician who I could actually find in Google. His name is Dr. Stephen Lamb, and he is the director of the Men's Health Clinic at New York University School of Medicine. 
So I think that there is some validity to this supplement. It's been studied in this exact formulation and it's being sold presumably in the exact formulation that it was studied. And so if you're going to try one, this may be a reasonable one. They also didn't find any really significant side effects in this study. But again, they only looked at normal, healthy men. So you do need to talk to your doctor if you have other comorbidities or other medical problems so they can see if this is safe for you to take. But what I do think is important is that men's health and the ability to have normal erections is super important. And seeing your doctor is can be very helpful. So please don't delay if you're nervous or concerned. This is something we do day in and day out, and we're happy to help you. So please go see a doctor if you have erectile dysfunction and we can help you. If you've taken one of these pills, please comment below because I'm curious to know what your experience was. Always remember to take care of yourself because you're worth it.